And welcome in everyone to RedRaiders.com. I'm Zach Long with Don Williams and Krista Pirtle. We call this show The Road Rage. Coming to you from Morgantown, West Virginia after making the long journey via airplane this time from Lubbock, Texas. And Don, we've poked some fun at the Mountaineer State this week, but my goodness, this has got to be one of the most gorgeous areas I've ever seen. Yeah, beautiful drive in today from uh, Pittsburgh down to Morgantown, quick one hour drive and uh, hope that a lot of fans, even some of, the, some of you folks who are watching the video will maybe have an opportunity to join us up here in uh, Morgantown on Saturday afternoon. Krista, coming into town, we actually saw quite a bit of signs in town that said, Welcome Texas Tech on them. A very friendly atmosphere, at least the day before here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Yeah, we'll see how they act tomorrow afternoon when it's game time. And speaking of a game time, of course, Texas Tech takes on West Virginia. Of course, the Red Raiders undefeated at 6-0, and and they will be greeted by a very familiar face, Don Williams and Dana Holgerson from the Mountaineers, someone very familiar with Cliff Kingsbury and the Texas Tech program. Last year, they suffered a really bad defeat at Lubbock. This is a game they want really bad. Yeah, Texas Tech, uh, I think no doubt about it, played its most complete game of the year last year when West Virginia came to Lubbock. And really the, situ the roles have kind of been reversed because last year West Virginia came to Lubbock as an undefeated team. They were 5-0. and They were high, had a high ranking and uh, visited Texas Tech on Texas Tech's homecoming. Red Raiders played their best game of the season, dominated in every aspect. And then uh, tomorrow, or pardon me, on Saturday, West Virginia, or Texas Tech comes in undefeated, nationally ranked. It's West Virginia's homecoming, and the yep. Mountaineers, as you said, I'm sure the Mountaineers feel like they got a little surprise in store for the Red Raiders. And now let's look at the West Virginia a little bit more in depth here and their most dangerous weapons and what makes them what they are, irregardless of the record. They're still a really good football team, Krista, that's shown some progression. Who is someone that stands out for you from West Virginia? I'm looking at, at senior safety Darwin Cook. He's already got four interceptions this year. He is number one in the Big 12 fourth nationally in his interception. So I think it's going to be a big deal for whoever starts at quarterback for Texas Tech to keep an eye on him and see where he is and make sure he doesn't get his hands on the ball. Don, I have a feeling I know which direction you're going to go here with most dangerous player for West Virginia. Yeah, West Virginia uh, obviously had a lot to replace off that uh, prolific offense that they've had the last couple of years. They lost Geno Smith, Stephen Bailey, Tavon Austin, uh, most all their playmakers, but they did import Charles Sims, former University of Houston running back, and if that name sounds vaguely familiar, all the way back in 09 when the Red Raiders played at U of H and lost that 29 to 28 game, Charles Sims was a thorn in their side that night. He, not so much rushing, but he caught 10 passes for 122 yards. This year, Dana Holgerson gets him as a transfer from U of H, and uh, he is the Mountaineers' leading rusher so far. Close to 500 yards rushing, a couple of 100-yard games, and so some of the uh, players on the Texas Tech team probably remember him from that night down in U of H, and they'll have to do a better job defending him than they did that night. Let's get down to the meat of it here on the Road Rage and look at how these teams can win tomorrow. I'll start with Krista. How does West Virginia win this football game? I think defensively. I think one big thing, I know that Tech can stop their offense, but I also think that in order for West Virginia to win, they need to stop Tech's offense, and that has been something that everyone has said has been improved this year. They didn't look so hot against Baylor a couple weeks ago, but I'm sure they're ready to get firing against the Red Raiders. And they did fantastic against Oklahoma State when they took the Cowboys off the undefeated ranks right here at the stadium behind us. Don, how do you think West Virginia could win this game? Similar to what Krista said, I think uh, – uh, you try to get your 50,000 plus folks all revved up and into it. Going to be loud here tomorrow, or on Saturday, excuse me. And um, and then you try. To, I, I think Dana Holgerson and his defensive staff will try to make whichever young Texas Tech quarterback make mistakes. And uh, this will be the toughest atmosphere that any of those guys have faced so far. Be it Davis Webb or Baker Mayfield if he's back from the knee injury, or even maybe a Michael Brewer. And um, so if they win, I think that's how they do it. They force one of the young quarterbacks to, you know, maybe throw a couple of interceptions. You commit a couple of turnovers, and they use that for momentum to get the crowd uh, uh, going even more. Now, Krista, on to the Red Raiders. If Tech gets out of here with a win tomorrow, how does it happen? It starts up front with the offensive line. Tech really needs to run the ball to control the clock so that West Virginia doesn't really have time. They're not really a quick strike offense as much as they were last year, this year. So I think if Tech can run the ball, does well with the offensive line, eats at the clock, then West Virginia won't have much of a chance to fight back a touchdown or two. Don, if Cliff Kingsbury wants to start 7-0, and how do they get it done? Uh, I think by asking your biggest playmakers to uh, come in here into a difficult place to play, and do what uh, do what they do best. I'm talking about guys like Eric Ward, Jason Morrow, Kenny Williams, 
those guys make plays. Uh, this team so far this season has really put a lot on the defense to carry them, and now I think it's time for the offense to uh, to help out. You don't want to keep forcing your de you don't want to keep putting your defense into situations where they feel like they have to hold the other team to 17 or 22 points, even though they've been real good at that. Uh, you, you want your offense to really pick it up and have a big, big game tomorrow. And it's all going to get sorted out tomorrow. Noon local time, guys, here in West Virginia. That's going to be 11 a.m. back in the land of Lubbock. And those of you that made the journey from West Texas up here, you're not going to be disappointed one bit. This is an absolutely wonderful environment for college football. We might get a little weather situation tomorrow. Looking like there's a good chance of rain, guys. But, you know, you got to play the game here regardless. Should be one heck of an environment for West Virginia and Texas Tech. We have a ton of coverage for you to get you ready for this game, guys, over at LubbockOnline.com and RedRaiders.com, and we'll have full coverage after the game tomorrow here from Morgantown. But for now, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Road Rage. For Don Williams, that is Krista Pertle. I'm Zach Long. We'll see you after the game Saturday. <laughs>